I'm not an interface designer, so themes are the greatest thing since sliced bread, at least to me. Themes are pre-designed interfaces for parts, buttons, fields, and any object that can be placed on a layout. Themes don't help you with positioning or organization, but they provide a consistent look and feel to your whole solution, and it's one that's been done by or created by an interface designer, a professional who knows how to match colors. So it makes it easy for me to create a good looking interface. So we're going to go into layout mode and take a look at the themes. You simply click on the button right here. And you notice we already have a theme called Enlightened. That's what's going to be applied to any brand new file. There are quite a few themes here as you scroll up and down, but there are less than in previous versions. They've focused in on the most important or the best themes so they can give you the best experience here and a lot of developers are creating their own themes anyhow so they don't necessarily need to have too many choices there it's a good idea to look through these and get familiar with them for instance one of my favorite is vibrant it's got a nice contrast between the blue and the black here and my clients choose this quite a bit I'm going to choose sophisticated for this particular project but there are quite a few here you've got luminous which I'm not a big fan of but maybe you love it. Maybe it's perfect for a particular project. Tranquil. And then you have the touch versions of each one of these. Therefore, your iOS or iPad solution or iPhone solution, for FileMaker Go that is, because they have bigger elements. So when you drag a field on there or a button on there, it's going to be bigger. And you can see the difference if you go from vibrant touch to vibrant for the desktop. So you can make your desktop and your on-the-go for FileMaker Go solutions match. Right below this you have your minimalist. This is good for starting your own theme because there's basically nothing going on or I often use it for print layouts because there's nothing going on. It's basically a, a very plain vanilla interface so you can add to it without having to remove a lot of stuff that you might have in let's say the Vibrant that you don't want. There's some other ones here, cool and warm very basic but usable and then new for FileMaker 17 we have the universal touch now the idea behind this is that you can use it as a starting point for all of your solutions it's kind of plain vanilla like you would have with your minimalist but it's designed only for touch although I've used it successfully across desktop and touch devices and it works pretty well and I actually asked the developer uh, the development team what they thought and they said yeah that's kind of the idea is to have one layout uh, for all of your devices so if you're just beginning out that can be really helpful to not have to design a specialized layout for every kind of uh, device out there but the great thing about it is it's different than the minimalist it has actually quite a few different options in it as far as styles and things like that so you have different styles all combined into one so you can more easily make your own theme we're gonna go back over to the sophisticated because we're designed for the desktop here we'll click OK and the first thing you'll see if you've noticed is that my red color and my green color disappeared from there if you go ahead and undo you'll notice that you don't undo you're still on the sophisticated theme but you'll see any change you made to the previous theme come back. You'd have to do another undo to get everything to come back to the enlightened theme. And then we can redo it. And you can see now I've gotten it to where I want. So one undo just undoes the changes or puts back the changes that you made in the previous theme. And that's often handy if you want to switch themes, you know, in in the middle of a project. So two undos is going to get you back to the theme you were originally back up before. So this looks pretty good. Now what we're going to do is point out a couple of things. First of all, I, I mentioned this before, but I want to mention it again. When you're putting information into a part, let's say a text block, you'll notice that if I start it inside of a different part, it's going to have a different style to it, right? It's part sensitive. So remember that. If you want something to be up in the header, well, you probably want to draw that button or that whatever it might be, that object, inside that particular part so you get the style that you want. And the styles you can see over here when you go into the inspector, you'll see them right over here. They'll list all the styles. So if you go to a particular item like a field, you'll see the styles that are there, the default and the minimal, like you can just change it like this. Right back to what it was. So you can click on any of these things and get different choices here. You'll see quite a few for the text blocks. 
And when you go over to our buttons, you'll notice that what we have is the default, and there's this little red button next to it. That's because we've changed it. Remember, we changed the button color. We can save it if we want. We're not going to do that because I want my buttons to come out the normal way, which if we draw a button right now, we'll see it comes out like this. And I'll put a button, some text. We'll put test right here. I don't need to add a script. And you'll see that it has the white icon and that. And then if you draw it over here, then of course you'll get it slightly different. There you go. And you see that, well, it's actually the same for no matter where you put a button on this one. That's OK. You can change it to different styles, though. This coming right over here. And these are all meant to match everything in here. So typically, I don't change the styles. I don't save them and override the style. And don't worry, it's not going to override the, the theme for the all your solutions, you know, the entire FileMaker uh, file or application. It does it just for this particular file. In fact, you can even import these uh, themes from file to file. If you make one you like, you can import it and, you know, and have one in addition to the ones that come standard with it. So there's really a lot of flexibility with these and you want to go ahead and make sure you understand how they work. Now if you decide on a theme, you want to come in here and look at Manage Themes and notice that we've got one layout with Enlighten, one with Sophisticated. If you have any zeros, you probably want to delete it because it's just making your file bigger and you don't need to store it inside the file because you're not using that theme. So if we were to come over here and save this, which go to Browse Mode, and then go to Manage Themes, You'll notice we have a zero now, and we probably should delete that because we're not using it anymore. There's no point in having it. So there's themes for you. It makes life easy for us non-designer types, and it can make it so that it looks really professionally designed without a lot of work.